Let's chat about space fashion, shall we? The bright orange color astronauts wear to go out for launch is called International Orange and is the same shade as the paint that coats Tokyo Tower in Japan and the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. However, once astronauts are in space, they swap orange for snow-white evening wear. It's always evening in space. So what gives with the different colors? Well, there are actually two main types of spacesuits. The first one is the advanced crew escape suit, also known as the orange suit, also known as the pumpkin suit. Trick or treat! Astronauts wear this full-pressure suit during liftoff. These spacesuits are crucial for those who are heading for super high altitudes. There, the pressure is so low that people can't survive without a special protective suit. Anyway, the orange suit is equipped with different stuff that can help an astronaut to survive if something goes wrong during the launch or the landing of the spaceship. For example, a usual pumpkin suit is stocked with flares, survival gear, medications, a radio, and a parachute. And a bunch of candy in case the costume kitties come to the house. Mm, not really. Well, okay, I get it. Astronauts wouldn't live through the process of leaving Earth without the orange suit. But still, why this color? Well, the main reason for picking orange is that this hue is one of the most visible for search and rescue, including sea rescue. Hmm, makes sense. Alright, how about the white, bulky spacesuits? Ah, these are EVA, which stands for Extravehicular Activities Suits. And their purpose is totally different from that of the orange suits. Astronauts wear EVA suits when they go on a spacewalk. Such an outfit can protect them from the unfriendly conditions of outer space, what with its extreme temperatures and near vacuum. Besides, the white suit can prevent small debris from hurting space travelers. You might have noticed that EVA suits are much bulkier than the orange ones. That's because they contain numerous layers of insulation and heavy protective fabric. On top of that, they contain breathable air, drinkable water, and temperature controls. Also, every time an astronaut goes on a spacewalk, they use a tether that ties them to the space station. However, in the case the tether tears, the EV suit has a backup system. This system includes small jet thrusters which can be controlled from the station with the help of a joystick. As for the color, the white hue reflects the heat of the sun better than the others. As a result, astronauts don't get too hot. What's more, the white color is best when it comes to spotting a tiny dot of an astronaut against the vast expanse of black-black space. One curious detail, while white spacesuits protect astronauts from getting too hot, they can't prevent them from getting too cold. And that's when the spaceman's gloves come into play. Yep, they have embedded heaters, which keep astronauts' fingers cozy and functioning. And speaking of cool, how about some more cool facts about astronauts that will give you a sneak peek at their highly unusual lives? While sleeping, astronauts must have exceptionally good airflow around them. Otherwise, the carbon dioxide they exhale can form a bubble around their heads and they'll become oxygen-deprived. When one astronaut threw a boomerang inside the International Space Station, it returned to him. So just remember that as long as there's some air which provides the necessary forces, even weightlessness won't prevent you from having a bit of fun. Astronauts have to get rid of their clothes after each use. See for yourself. To bring a mere one pound of laundry to the International Space Station costs more than $10,000. So, it costs less to throw the clothing away when it gets dirty than to waste water on washing it. Skylab was the first American space station which operated for about a half a year from May 1973 to February 1974. Its interior was pretty big, and the astronauts sometimes got stuck in the middle. From there, they'd have to wait for the currents of air to blow them closer to a wall or try to swim back through the air. Months after coming back from long missions in space, astronauts still tend to let go of things while they're still in midair. They've gotten so accustomed to everything floating, they get a shock when the objects simply crash to the floor. There was an astronaut who had been waiting for a whopping 19 years before he finally flew into space. The thing is that the mission he had been selected to go on got canceled. Then, he remained a backup for other astronauts. Only in 1985 did the persistent astronaut manage to fly on the space shuttle. 
all American astronauts have to learn Russian to be able to run the International Space Station using Russian language manuals, if there's no alternative. There's a specially trained person who smells every single thing that astronauts take with them into space. It's done to protect them from unpleasant or toxic odors. The thing is that you can't really air the room out in space if you don't like how it smells inside. That's why NASA is extremely careful about what kinds of odors are allowed to pass through. During space adaptation, 50 to 75% of astronauts have highly unpleasant syndromes, such as vertigo, headaches, nausea, and overall tiredness. Well, that doesn't sound like fun. Luckily, everything goes back to normal within 72 hours. When astronauts are in space, they often see random flashes of light, and it's not hallucinations. Cosmic rays that hit the optic nerve create this effect. You don't see similar flashes here on Earth because the magnetosphere doesn't let cosmic rays reach you. And that's a good thing. If an astronaut needs to scratch their nose while wearing the EVA suit, there's a patch of Velcro inside the helmet. I was always wondering about that. Before going into space, astronauts have underwater training, which is supposed to simulate zero gravity. But in fact, it has nothing in common with being in outer space. So the main purpose of the underwater training is to see how future astronauts can deal with extreme environments. If you've always dreamed of growing a bit taller, you should probably go into space. Due to the lack of gravity, astronauts grow, on average, 2 inches taller during their mission. But they shrink back several months after they return to Earth. Obviously, if someone gets injured on the space station, they can't be rushed to a hospital right away. That's why each astronaut is extensively trained so that they can deal with medical emergencies. Before flying to space, potential astronauts have to get through incredibly tough competition. According to NASA, they accept only 8 applicants out of 6,000. On top of that, the selection process takes around 18 months. When an astronaut returns from a long stay on the ISS, they feel incredibly clumsy. After being used to the lack of gravity in space, it's difficult to adapt to the necessity of climbing steps or going around furniture. The lack of gravity also makes sneezing inside a spacesuit a serious problem. If they absolutely have to sneeze, astronauts bend their heads downward and sneeze into their chest. Otherwise, their visors would have to be equipped with windshield wipers. And that's not very pleasant. Astronauts have been replacing bread with flour tortillas since the mid-80s. The thing is that crumbly foods are understandably not allowed on the space station because stray crumbs can damage the equipment. Tortillas, on the other hand, don't present such a risk. Besides, they instantly became very popular with the astronauts. They also fly very well in a weightless environment. If an astronaut cries in space, tears don't flow down their face. Instead, they gather into thick blobs of liquid around their eyes because the water surface tension holds tears together. Surprisingly, when coming back after a mission away from the Earth, astronauts still have to pass through customs. For example, when Apollo 11 returned from the moon, the spacemen had to declare the moon dust, moon rocks, and other samples they'd collected on their trip to a foreign land. I mean, really far away. Astronauts who forget to attach themselves to something when they sleep can easily float away and bump into a hard surface. That's why they usually rest in sleeping bags in a small crew cabin. To shower without gravity isn't an easy feat. Thus, astronauts take a shower in an enclosed cylinder which keeps the water from floating away. They use a no-rinse shampoo, spray themselves with water to rinse off the soap, and finally use a vacuum hose which sucks up all the water from their bodies. The ISS orbits our planet at a very high speed. I mean, it only takes 92 minutes to make a full circle. That's why astronauts see a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes, which totals 15 to 16 sunsets and sunrises each day. And if you want to see the space station fly over your house during the morning or evening hours, check out spotthestation.nasa.gov. Type in your town, and they'll send you a heads up with the exact times when you can run out and wave to the astronauts as they fly overhead. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. 
And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.